video of this playlist, we will uh, consider the um, uh, control of the LEDs present in our demonstration board. After watching this presentation, you will actually be able to explain how to control any pin through the boundary scan infrastructure. Here's a, uh, the um, schematic diagram of our board, which you are already familiar with. As you know, we have highlighted the uh, two boundary scan chains that we have present in this board, and th in this case we have also uh, highlighted the eight LEDs that are connected to the outputs of the um, uh, boundary scan device that is uh, connected to boundary scan chain number two. So we have scan chain number one and scan chain number two. By default, when we power up the board, the uh, circuitry that is present here will drive uh, uh, eight, eight, uh, four LEDs to be on and four LEDs to be off. And this is the uh, pattern that is present at the uh, inputs of this device by default. Now, what we want is to take control of the output pins through the boundary scan infrastructure and independently of the uh, logic pattern coming from the core logic which in this case is just the identity function we want to uh, define a different condition for the operating state of the eight LEDs so in this case we want um, for example this to be on off on off on off and we want to achieve this objective using the boundary scan infrastructure uh, to do so we will use a small application called the uh, remote boundary scan test workbench this application was actually developed by a group of two students in a similar course and it uh, comprises a number of tabs that you see represented here. Uh, it uh, supports the specification of a small uh, number of test operations using a test representation format known as um, uh, Serial Vector Format or SVF. The serial vector format comprises a small number of um, um, expressions that uh, are used to represent test operations and test data. Uh, our application also uh, offers a uh, window where the uh, execution of each of these operations is shown in terms of uh, what bits are shifted in and what bits are shifted out from the board. Now the uh, other tabs enable us to see the uh, waveforms present in the test access port pins and uh, besides a small web browser we also have the possibility of looking at the uh, state diagrams corresponding to the two test access ports in our board. Now, uh, the syntax of this uh, representation format is a very straightforward. Uh, actually, what this program does is that uh, we start by selecting test access port number two. Uh, recall that we have two test access ports, that is to say two boundary scan chains, and we want to use boundary scan chain number two, so that's why we, select, we start by the select TAP2 command. Then uh, the second command um, sends the uh, devices in the uh, second boundary scan chain to the reset state. So um, what we are saying is uh, take this device to the uh, reset state in terms of its boundary scan infrastructure. And the last two commands are also very straightforward. They are actually a representation for um, scan through the instruction registers and scan through the data registers. Uh, these are two very similar commands. The only difference is that this one will take the uh, test access port controller to the shift instruction register state while this one takes the um, test access port controller to the shift data register state.
In, in the first case, we are shifting in 8 bits, and what we send into test data in is just all zeros. This is a hexadecimal representation, so this is uh, 8 zeros. This represents what we expect to find in TDO, test data output. So while we shift in 8 zeros, we expect uh, 8 1 in hexadecimal to be shifted out. Uh, in binary form, this represents um, 8 is 1 0 0 0 and 1 is 0 0 0 1. So this represents 1 0 0 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. The last two bits, as we have referred before in a different presentation, are uh, 0, 1, the last two bits, as um, indicated in the uh, boundary scan standard. Now, we know the uh, value of every bit in this case because we have looked in the device data sheet, so we can use a mask that says compare every bit. Uh, FF means all bits 1, and this indicates that every bit should be compared. If we wanted to look only to the uh, two last bits, then the mask in hexadecimal would be 0, 3 meaning that the only, only the two last bits would be compared. Now, as uh, these two last lines, 3 and 4, are executed, um, this window shows uh, what are the bits being shifted in and shifted out. Actually, you see here that the 8-1 is being shifted out as expected, so this is a representation of the bits that are captured at the um, TDO pin of the board. Now, if we look at the, uh, if we press the waveforms tab, then we will see the waveforms at the uh, corresponding test access port pins. Uh, test access port number one is empty, let's say, because every, all the action is taking place in the uh, test access port number two. Now, uh, if we press the uh, state diagram tab, we would have a look at the um, state transition taking place as the program executes. We start at the test logic reset state, or we expect to start, actually, uh, our first real command is um, go to reset, because after executing a few programs, we uh, might not know exactly in which state we were. So it's always a good practice to start with state reset. Actually, if you look at the uh, state diagram, you see that uh, wherever you may be in this diagram, you can always reach the uh, reset state by setting TMS to 1 and uh, driving 5 test clock uh, pulses. So if, if you are here, for example, then by setting TMS to 1, you go here, then here. This is two cycles, three, four, five. Whatever, wherever you are, uh, uh, with at most five TCK pulses, you will be able to return to the test logic reset state. So actually, the um, execution of this command, state reset, what it does is that it generates this first section in the waveform. You can see that we uh, have set TMS to 1 and then just um, produced 5 test clock cycles. Then the second command um, is in order to scan through the instruction register. So we are here, we have to go to the shift instruction register state, meaning that we have to drive a 0 to TMS, then two ones, and then two zeros to get there. And if you look at the um, waveforms, that's actually what you see happening. This first zero is uh, the one shown at this point. So this is the uh, rising edge uh, that takes the um, state diagram from test logic reset to run test idle at this point. Then we drive two uh, TCK pulses with TMS at one going there, and we drive two 
uh, more pulses with TMS at zero to get to shift instruction register. And uh, we have an indication of the current state being shown in this part. So actually you see that uh, after these two pulses um, we enter the shift instruction register state. And um, we want to uh, shift in all zeros, that is why uh, TDI goes to zero and remains there for the following eight task log cycles. Now if you look at TDO, we actually see that the expected uh, sequence at the um, output is indeed taking place. So the first bit is one, the second bit to come out is zero, then a few further zeros and the last bit is one and this is what is to be expected so by actually comparing the waveforms with the uh, test program we will have an opportunity to understand how the execution of this test program um, influences the operating mode of the um, test logic